the present uh, generation and okay? uh, the present generation you know so we know that uh, you know the reason that i'm taking that portion uh, for uh, sharing the word of god this morning because we have this sunday school uh, anniversary and related to that uh, let me share with you something which is from the bible and which is uh, very applicable for the uh, for the kids and the generation of present day and i believe that i mean god will bless all our kids and all our children all our i mean uh, youngsters uh, in the coming days and god will use them for the glory of the lord in the coming days amen so we are, we are going to pray for them and we will be blessing them i mean in the name of father and the son and the holy spirit amen so this morning you know we know that our present generation or our kids or children uh, are facing many challenges in the society you know our children always they are going into the society and they are facing many challenges in their life but i think god i mean you know i think that uh, i mean god has given us the wonderful children in our church and they are used by god in different different capacities when our children are used by god in different capacities at the same time you know i i thank god that god has given these many people these many i mean children in our church to i mean work for the lord and they are surviving the challenges only because of the support of the parents and uh, the, the church members and the elderly people you know the elderly people and the sunday school teachers and our uh, office workers and all the people from our church they are supporting our children right they are supporting them we are supporting them we are encouraging them and we are giving more opportunities for our children to perform it's not not only to perform but they are using their talents for the name of the lord and the kingdom of god amen so they are using their talents and they are surviving the challenges in the society you know when our children are into the society they are facing the challenges but they are able to survive the challenges only because of the prayer of the church only because of the support of the parents and the church people and all other people amen so we have to pray for them so i'm going to preach about uh, i mean uh, about a, a, a title called our kids to shine as light in the world our kids to shine as the light in the world okay and the main text that uh, today's sermon is philippians chapter 2 verses 12 to 15 philippians chapter 2 uh, verses 12 to 15 okay it is there in the slide and you can one of you can read that portion and uh, when one person is reading that portion uh, all others can just listen into that and uh, attentively sit into I mean, I mean focus your attention to uh, that portion then uh, we will understand uh, what is the situation of today's uh, generation uh, or the society and how our, uh, our children our our believers generation should be I mean uh, uh, grown okay so let us let's read that portion who is ready yeah So we know that the book of Philippians or epistle of Philippians is written for the uh, for the Christians those who were living in the Philippine city okay the Philippine city was a famous city in those days when the time of Paul but at the same time there were many other I mean other, other problems which was happening in the in the society in the city so that's the reason you know uh, Apostle Paul was writing to the to the I mean, Christians in Philippian city and uh, knowing what is the situation of that city and knowing what is the situation of the Christians in that city and knowing I mean how wretched and how crooked is the generation of those people okay, of, of that time we know that each book in the Bible is addressing to to the people of God or to the believers of God right each book of the Bible, take 66 books of the Bible, you will understand that every book is related or every book is, I mean, what is that, addressing to the believers of the 
how believers of the people of God, especially take uh, maybe Old Testament. Okay, the Old Testament is addressing the people of Israel. Okay, mostly it is addressing the people of Israel, and they are supposed to obey that word, and also they are supposed to preach or proclaim that word of God to the other people. So that is the responsibility given for the people of Israel. Think about the New Testament. New Testament also is addressing to the believers, right? The Christian churches take uh, the Corinthians or Galatians or Philippians or Colossians, I mean, whatever it may be, Ephesians or these Philippians, okay? Which all the, I mean, uh, uh, what is that? Epistles are written there and the Gospels are written there. In Gospel, what happens? I mean, Jesus Christ was preaching many things and he was uh, sharing these sermons in, in different places and he was speaking to the the, to, the, to the followers. At the same time, the responsibility is given to the, to the, to the believers and the responsibility is given to the, uh, to the listeners, those who are listening the word of God, that they are supposed to propagate and they are supposed to proclaim that gospel to the other people. Okay, this is the reason the Bible is always addressing the believers or the people of God and encourage, the Bible is encouraging the people of God to do something in the society, right? To do something in the, I mean, crooked generation, among the crooked generation. So this is what we have to understand. God has given a, a particular responsibility for every person, especially for our kids and for our, I mean, I mean, youngsters, the young adults and the elderly people, I mean, pastor, I mean, leaders, everyone are given by God a special responsibility to preach or to, uh, to share the gospel to the other people, those who are not believing in Jesus Christ. I mean, so think about, you know, about the Philippine city, the Christians were influenced by many things. The Christians were influenced by many things. Next slide, I mean. So, you know, here, you know, we can see that Philippines were influenced by the, the, the society. Now, understand, you know, when, whenever we are living in this, in, in this country, you know, when we go out from the church, we are into the society, right? We are into the society. And there are many people, there will be believers, there will be unbelievers, there will be churches. I mean, the Christian churches and there will be, I mean, satanic church also. Satan churches are growing <laughs> these days, you know. Think about that. The you know, satanic church is there. The Christian churches are there. Many, I mean, temples are there. Mosques are there. Mosques are there. And there are many other religious uh, institutions and organizations are there outside the church. Okay. In the society. But the problem is, most of the time, there is a chance that our children, our kids or our ancestors may be influenced with all other things which is happening outside the church, in the society. So the same thing that Apostle Paul is writing to the Christians in Philippian church and he is saying that think about, understand what are the, what are the problems which is happening and what are the issues which is influencing the children of God. The children of God, the youngsters outside the church, in the society. When they were, those people, those Christians were heavily influenced by the Roman culture. The culture is the main thing that we have to, we have to think about, you know. The, sometimes, you know, our children, our, what is that, our, 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 our youngsters, they ask some questions to us, okay, to the parents or the pastor, you know. Often, uh, my uh, son and been used to ask some questions to me. Because they are watching all these things which is happening in the society. And they are always looking into the people, those who are living in this society. And they are asking, not only I've been, all other, I mean, youngsters are having many questions in their life. And they are asking, why should we do that? And why should we should not do that? Okay? They are doing that and they are following that. And why should we not? Okay, this is, these are the questions that the, 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 the youngsters are having. These are the questions that our children are having. But at the same time, we must be ready to give the correct answer for them from the Bible. From the Bible. Only the book which is given for us is the Bible. Okay, so when we read Bible, we will get the answer from the Bible and we will share with them. And also we have to encourage our children. We have to encourage our kids and youngsters that you must be rooted in the scripture. You must be rooted in the I mean, scripture. So those people in Philippine city, they were heavily influenced by the Roman culture and with the Roman paganism. 
intellectualism and the immorality these are the things that these are the i mean the, the, the problems which was these are the situations which was happening in the philippian city okay even it was influenced by the christian believers also so that's the reason apostle paul is exhorting them to work out for their salvation in that verse it is i think in uh, verse 14 it is clearly written that you work out no 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 it is it is 12 verse 12 verse 12 okay so then my beloved just as you have always obeyed not as in my presence only but now much more in my absence work out your salvation with fear and trembling work out for your salvation in my absence that means while he was writing apostle paul was writing this letter or this epistle paul was not there in philippine city he was writing this letter from outside and he said that why i am not there okay i'm not there now with you my presence is not there but you have to read bible you have to think about the godly things and you have to be rooted in the scripture then only you will be working hard for your salvation there is a question today that is there any need of working for salvation is there any need of working for salvation in fact there is no need of working any doing anything for salvation we are getting salvation by believing in jesus Christ, right it's very simple it's very simple and it's very easy that we are receiving jesus as a personal savior by faith by faith we are not doing anything we are not doing anything to get salvation did you do anything only one thing that we had the faith in jesus christ and we accepted jesus as a person a savior this is the reason that we are called christians right we are called christians that we are called the children of god we are called the saints of god only because we received jesus as a person a savior a person how can how can you call a person as a christian how can we call a person as a christian who is the really a person yeah who is that yeah who said it we oh yeah very good very good very good one day you know that person will accept jesus as his or her personal savior right okay so you know it, it, it does not mean that you okay uh, you are born into a christian family or pentecostal family or roman catholic family or jacobit family or matomet family whatever it may be you are born into that family you are born into that background but at the same time, it doesn't mean that you are a Christian. When you become a Christian, you become a Christian when you have the personal relationship with Jesus Christ, when you are accepting Jesus as your personal Savior into your heart. This is a great privilege that God has given us. Even our children have many chances to receive Jesus as a personal Savior. They accepted and they took the baptism in the name of Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit in the water in immersion baptism. So this is what we understand when a person is becoming a Christian, that person is, I mean, submitting himself in the hands of God into the church to be discipleship, to be to be to become a disciple. Right? So we are disciplining ourselves and we are under the process of discipleship. In order to become like Jesus. In order to identify with Jesus and the character of Jesus Christ. Amen. See, we're coming back to that point. You know, so here, Apostle Paul is encouraging the, the Christians in Philippians, even though they are already believers. They are already believers. believers. They are saved people. They got salvation and they got baptism. Everything is okay. They might have the power and the presence and the infilling of the Holy Spirit also. But again, Apostle Paul is encouraging and encouraging them that saying you have to work hard for your for your own salvation, right? Eh? For your own salvation, you have to work hard. How can we work for that? No, we have to work for that because our salvation process is not yet done. Okay? We are saved we are already saved from the penalty of the sin now we are being saved 
from the influence of the sin, right? Now we have any influences. We already saved from the penalty of the sin, but now this is a continuous process which is happening. The sanctification is happening, and now we are waiting. And every day we are praying, "O oh Lord, forgive me, O oh God, forgive me, O oh God, cleanse me, O oh God, cleanse me, O oh God." Right? Okay. So every day we are praying for that, and we are working hard for that, and we are praying that, "O oh Lord, deliver me from the influences of the sin and Satan and the world." And again. At the coming of second coming of Jesus Christ, at the time of second coming of Jesus Christ, our body will be transformed. Our body will be transformed, and we will fly away from this earth to hell. You are not happy hearing that. Why you are not happy hearing that? The second coming of Jesus Christ is at hand. Ayo, we are very satisfied. Yes, we are very happy. We are very satisfied. Hallelujah! Our Jesus coming. I mean, Jesus is coming soon. Our Jesus is coming soon. We are preparing for that. Hallelujah! But God has placed every person, every individual, every child, and every I mean, youngster in the in the in this society to preach the gospel, to propagate the gospel, to share the gospel to the wicked and crooked generation outside the church. We are coming to that point. And that's the reason Apostle Paul says you have to work hard. You keep your life in a holy manner so that your salvation will be completed when Jesus Christ is coming in the air. Hallelujah! Praise God. That means the holy generation is a crooked and perverted and wicked generation. So the Christian believers and godly generation must be saved and protected. from the wicked generation before sharing the gospel to the wicked generation we must pray that oh lord deliver me protect me from all kinds of holy things right children those who are sitting here those who are listening through the zoom youngsters everyone listen very carefully this point before sharing the gospel to the other people to the unbelievers and the generation the, the wicked generation pray in the presence of god parents pray for them Church people pray for them so that they might be protected from all the worldly pleasures. They might be protected from all the worldly and wicked generation. This must be the prayer of a parent. This must be a prayer of a Sunday school teacher. This must be a prayer of a church in the coming days. Hallelujah! Especially, you know, we 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 are going to think about something which is happening in the society today. You know the specialities of the worldly generation. The specialities of the worldly generation. Those who are writing down these points, you can write down very quickly. I'll be just reading out that because of the lack of time. Amen. So you know, think about the speciality of the today's generation. So I'm preaching in this way because this is the anniversary, the Sunday school anniversary. Day. Okay. So think about what is the speciality of the uh, of 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 today's generation or the worldly generation. Or the society, the present situation of our society. Okay, I I read it from 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 what from what book? Okay, I'm just I mean uh, uh, I'm just giving you those points. You know, in society there are there is a politics. It's without ethics. There is a politics in society, but there is no ethics. Okay, I just read out. Okay, there are there is morality without standards. There is morality without any standard. That means. Immorality is common everywhere. Immorality is common everywhere. No, the the government itself is giving the permission to do anything what you like. Okay, so in I think uh, they have found another word in between the morality and immorality also now. That means whatever you do, it's up to you only. If you can do anything, you can do anything. Any immoral things you can do, there is nobody to ask you any question. Okay, so this is the situation of the. the generation today outside 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 the church okay and you know you know someone was asking one thing that uh, the churches are making a guilty feeling in the people the churches are making a guilty feeling in the people that means the churches and the pastors and the preachers are always preaching oh that is sin and this is sin you don't do don't do don't do don't do don't do there are many sentences which are written in bible don't do that don't do that don't touch that when the pastors and the preachers are preaching that the people are thinking oh these pastors and these church people are always making a guilty feeling 
in the people. We are not making that guilty feeling, but if, if, we, if we are not preaching this, who will preach that? This is the reality. No, let them have the guilty feeling in there. Let them let them know. Let the let the wicked generation, let the worldly generation know that this is absolutely wrong. And this is absolutely sin and immoral. We should not follow all those things. Hallelujah. So we are going to pray for our children. And there is leadership without service. There are many leaders in society, but they are not having the mentality of serving or service. There are economics, but without justice. Economic is, I mean, it's growing, growing, growing fast, but there is no justice at all. There is culture without intimacy. You know, the people now are they starving for the culture. Oh, this is our culture. This is your culture. And everything is there. Culture is there. But there is no intimacy. You know, where there is no intimacy, what is the meaning of culture? Where there is no intimacy, what is the, I mean, what is the meaning of religion? What is the meaning of the word of God? What is the meaning of the church? Even in the church also, there is no intimacy sometimes. Okay? So, we should I mean, contact the people. We should have the fellowship together with the people. You know, we are not separated one uh, from from one, one one person to another person, but we are all in one in Jesus Christ, and we are working for the Lord. Okay, and there is science without morality. Science is growing every day. Science is there. You know, the, uh, uh, especially our children, they know many things from the science, but there is no morality in the science. There is education without any values. No, the education system is growing fast, rapidly it is growing. At the same time, there is no values in the education. And you know, nowadays the people are, I mean, studying, doing their education only for getting a job, right? Okay, you know, in the earlier time it was not like that. In the earlier time, in the Malarthi Param, the Guru Gudam, okay, you know, the Guru Gudam, okay? You know, the student should uh, sit at the feet of uh, a master or, or a teacher and, 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 and that the student is studying from there. From the feet of the, oh sorry, from the feet of the master or the teacher. Even Jesus also was doing that. Jesus, many were sitting at the feet of Jesus Christ, and Jesus was teaching them. Okay, there was no school. Okay, three and a half years there was no school. There was no Bible college or something. But the disciples were listening. The, the disciples were uh, learning those things from Jesus Christ and sitting at the feet of Jesus Christ and always following Jesus Christ. But now. The education, most of the time, our children are studying only to get a job, to get a job, okay? So there is no value in education. There is humanity, but without sharing. Humanity is there. The people are always speaking, oh, we are humans and we need the humanity, 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 and we need the human rights and everything. But there is no sharing. Nobody is able to, nobody is willing to share to the other people what they have but they are they are just i mean speaking for the humanity humanity and there are many religions without sacrifice the religious leaders the religion is always standing and saying this you have to obey this you have to obey that but actually there is no sacrifice those leaders are not ready to sacrifice themselves for the values for the religion and also there are church there is church without the Holy Spirit. So this morning, let me encourage you one thing, that our church is filled with the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Let us, church will be filled with the Holy Spirit. You know, we are, when I mean, we are saying, we are professing that, okay, we have a good church, and we have an ELC church, okay, eternal love, church of God. How many of you are filled with the power of the Holy Spirit this morning? Let me ask you one question. But if you are not filled with the Holy Spirit, and if you are not guided by the Holy Spirit, there is no meaning that you are saying we are the church and we are the Christian church. Hallelujah. If you say that you are the church and you are the member of a Christian church, I mean, you must be filled with the Holy Spirit. I mean, our worship services, I mean, should, I mean, let it be, I mean, with the power of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Let our worship services, let our gatherings in the, I mean, big days, I mean, everything become, I mean, powerful with the power of the Holy Spirit in, the, in this new year. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. You know, this is the situation everywhere in the society. Everywhere. Corruption, immorality, sinful pleasures, less fullness. And the situation is getting worse and worse every day in the society. 
But our children must know the difference between the Christian generation and the worldly generation. I was speaking about, I mean, what is the situation of the outside generation or worldly generation of the society. But it's, it should be a prayer. Oh Lord, let our children, let our youngsters know the difference between the worldly generation and the Christian generation. The worldly generation, the wicked generation and the believers generation today. Hallelujah. My question to the parents today and the teachers today is, we know that always changes happen in the society. But how our children react to those changes? We know that. It's sure that, of course. There are many changes happening in the society. But how our children are reacting to those changes? Or how our children or how our youngsters are reacting to those changes and challenges? There are many challenges they face. How can we equip them to face the challenges? Teachers, Sunday school teachers, church people, elderly people, equip the children, parents, equip the children, equip the youngsters, I mean young adults to, to, to face the challenges in the society. Hallelujah. How can we protect our children for the worldly things? Somebody was saying we should isolate our children from the society. We cannot do that. We cannot do that. We cannot isolate our children from society. Because they are into the society. When they are going for the studies. When they are going for the job. Okay. So whenever it may be they are going into the society. What can we do? We can pray for them. Hallelujah. Let me, let me, let me give you some I mean, solution for those issues and questions. First of all, we cannot isolate our children, our kids from society, but if they are rooted in the scripture, they will know what are the differences between the worldly generation and the godly generation. They will understand what are the differences between the worldly teachings and the biblical doctrines. Secondly, increase our children to make a friendship circle with Christian kids and believers children so that that children, that circle Friendship that Christian children can share the gospel to the outside people. We can do that. We can do that. We can encourage our children, encourage our I mean, I mean kids and encourage our youngsters. I mean, make you can make some friends from the Christian Christian I mean circle, right? Okay. So if you have a friend just like a Christian, you know, you can you can go with him or go with her and share the gospel to the other people in that circle. I mean, so it, it could happen, you know, many times, you know, many, many youngsters are destroyed only because of the bad friendship, right? You know, many, many of the, I mean, uh, 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 our children are destroyed. They are not able to survive in this world and they are not able to, I mean, follow the, the biblical doctrines because, I mean, they have some other friends, the bad friends, okay? So I, I would encourage every, I mean, youngsters, every children of our church this morning that, make some good friendship with the Christian people, then you can use those people also, those friends also, to share the gospel to the other people. Amen? So thirdly, encourage them to love God in all circumstances. Encourage them to love God in all, all their circumstances. Fourthly, teach them to keep priority and first preference to God and His word. This is the most important thing. Teach them Grace them always to give priority and first preference to God and His Word of God. Hallelujah. Let them try to be like Jesus Christ. It's good trying to imitate some of the good people, exemplary people in the society. Maybe your parents, your pastor, some of the leaders. Okay, You can imitate those people at the same time. Your prayer for your children should be Oh Lord, let them be like Jesus Christ. Let them grow in the Spirit of God. Let them be like Jesus Christ, but characters for Jesus in Jesus Christ. Look at me, Jesus. He lived a perfect life in an imperfect world. Right? Three and a half years Jesus was living in this world. Okay? He lived a perfect life among the imperfect people. Right? This is possible with the children ours. 
this morning. Hallelujah. Remember, worldly generation in our society also is created by God and it's our responsibility to make them under the salvation plan of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Let me encourage our kids and youngsters today, youngsters today that uh, use the challenges, challenge the situation as a chance to share gospel to your, I mean, your non-believing friends and their colleagues. Hallelujah. Knowing that believers' children are the children of God. I mean, if you know that, believers' children are the children of God. I know that uh, only we have only, I mean, few boy, uh, programs for the Sunday school anniversary, you know. Can I take five more minutes? Okay, so so we have enough time. So, I know, I was just thinking about this point that uh, now the believers' children are the children of God, right? That's the reason that Apostle Paul is writing in the in this epistle in Philippians that you know you are the children of God remember always you are the children of God when we are going outside the church and we are going to the society always remember that you are a child of God Hallelujah. so every child of a believer is a child of God so in that way you can think that wherever you are going you may be I mean, you are going somewhere for your studies or you are going somewhere for your job Wherever you are, wherever you are traveling, remember one thing, you are a child of God. You are a child of God. Hallelujah. Knowing that the believer's children are the children of God. And you are the future promises of our church. Amen. Children, instead, you are the promise of the future. You are the, pro you are the future promises of our church. How many parents are thinking about that? How many sons or teachers are thinking about that? Hallelujah. Our children are the promise of the future in our church. They must be rooted in the word of God. They must be rooted in the doctrine of God. And they, as they are growing in the society, as they are moving into the society, let them have the strength in their life. Let them have the word of God in their life. And let them I mean, fight against the challenges of this world. Hallelujah. Thank you, Master. Hallelujah. And you, children, kids, youngsters, you are to be the pillars of the church in the future. Now, the elderly people, those are sitting here, they are getting old. Pastor is getting old. Okay? The elderly people who are sitting here, they are getting old. But, children, our youngsters, you are supposed to be the pillars of the Christian church in the coming days. Equip yourself for that. Equip yourself for that. Parents, equip them for that. Teachers, equip them for that. Church people, equip them for that. Hallelujah. Thank you, Master. And you are supposed to shine as lights in the world in your generation. That's what we read in this particular verse. That you are the lamp of the world, right? You are the light of the world. And you are supposed to shine as lights in the world in your generation. Think about what is your involvement in this wretched and wicked society. No? Just think about what is your role? What is your involvement? In this society, in this wicked society, in this crooked society, you know, it is very clearly written crooked and wicked, and what is that? Perverted generation. Perverted generation is clearly written that verse. Now, what is your involvement in this generation? I mean, in this society. Now, I read about uh, uh, one Pastor David uh, Wilkerson from New York. Okay? Uh, pastor David Wilkerson was a pastor in New York, and from his life story, I read like this. You know, in, in New York, there were many uh, gangsters and gang leaders were there. At the same time, this pastor decided once that uh, I just need to talk to those people, the gangsters and all the, 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 the maybe the boys, boys, they were doing many uh, uh, wicked things in that area and uh, they were caught sometimes by police and police could not do anything because they were under 18. And this was the problem and the pro pro problem was uh, increasing day by day. Then this pastor took a decision, I need to speak to, those, I mean, speak to these people. And once again, he was searching for the leader of that and it was Nikki Cruz. Nikki Cruz was the leader of that group and gang. And he need to, need to speak to this Nikki Cruz. And he went there into that, into that place. And he was asking where these people are staying. Where these gangsters are staying. So I just wanted to speak to them. And once he went to the court, when these gangsters were there in the court for their, I mean, what is that judgment, 
you know, this man, this master stood there and said, you know, I have something to speak. And uh, the judge was asking, what do you have? What do you have a weapon? And they were thinking that again, this man also is, is, is from the gang. And they were asking, what, what do you have? What, 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 is, what, is, what is the weapon that you have now? Then he just lifted up the Bible and said, this is the weapon that I have. Then police said, no, no, you cannot stand here. You go out. He went out and he was searching for this man, this Nicky Cruz, once again and again and again he was searching. And once he found him and just he went there and just, I mean, he was trying to, I mean, give him shake and, and he was saying, praise the Lord that this Nicky Cruz was very badly treating him. And he, what you know, what he did? Eh? He was the man, and then just a man. I mean, he he slapped on the cheek of that David. Okay, he slapped nicely. He slapped the cheek. At the same time, he was again in the next two week again. This David Wickerson went and gave the hand, hand, hand uh, gave the I mean hand, and uh, he said, "Jesus loves you." Then the second time, this man, Nicky Cruz was just taking the blade from his pocket and, he, and just cut the hands of the, the David. He went back. Third time, he went there to meet this Nicky Cruz. And he went there and said, Nicky Cruz, Jesus loves you. I know that you have a gang. You have many people with you. But I know that Jesus loves you. Again, you know what, what this man said? Nicky Cruz said, no, no. If you're coming here again, and if you are sharing gospel to me again, I will, I will piece you, I will kill you and make thousand pieces from your body. I will kill you with thousand pieces. What would be the answer of David, you know? David said, if you piece me into thousand pieces, I say that still that one piece will talk to you that Jesus loves you. One piece among the thousand pieces will talk to you, will speak to you that Jesus still loves you because that much burden I have about you. He fell down there and he submitted his, his life in the hands of God that day. Remember, youngsters, remember the kids, the children of our church. Hallelujah. I personally believe that God is using, God is going to use you. I mean, every day in the coming days to propagate the gospel to the people of the, to the people outside. Hallelujah. Dear parents of the church, what is your prayer for your kids? What is your prayer for your kids? Close your eyes and pray. Hallelujah. This morning, we are going to pray for our children. We are going to pray for our youngsters. What is your prayer for your children? Sunday school teachers, what is your prayer for your children in your class? Elderly people, what is your prayer for your children in the church? Of course, we pray, O oh Lord, protect them from all harm. Protect them from all accidents, O oh Lord. No, we pray that, O oh Lord, protect them from the sickness, O oh Lord. Give them good education. Give them good food, O oh God. Give them good job, O oh Lord. Give them bright future in their life, O oh God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. What? Well, let me tell you one thing here. As Jesus prayed and as Jesus said, you have to pray a different prayer this morning. You are going to pray a different prayer for your children today. And you are growing children. They are coming up. They are coming up. Pray for those children. It's, it is, it's good that you are giving a good education for them. It's good that you are giving a good I mean, uh, food for them. A good, finding a good job for them. Finding a good future. A bright future for them. At the same time, Hallelujah. How many of you are praying for your children, for your children that, oh Lord, deliver them from the world or protect them from the system of this world, oh God. Hallelujah. Jesus prayed in John chapter 17 verse 15. My prayer is not that you take them out of the world, but that you protect them from the evil one. Let us also pray for our children, oh Lord. Protect them, O Lord, from all the evil things in this world, O Lord. Lord, the society is filled with the evil things, O Lord. The society is always filled with the, all the wickedness, O God. All the crookedness, O God. They are promoted, O God. But Lord, this morning, we are praying for our children so that they will be growing in the word of God. They will be rooted in the scripture. 
Jesus said, my prayer is not that you take them out of the world. We are not taken out of the world. We are saved. We are baptized. We are the children of God, but placed in this world. We are placed in the society. Hallelujah. We are living in this society. We cannot go out of this society. But at the same time, Jesus prayed, Oh Lord, I'm not praying that you take them away out of the world, but that you protect them from the evil ones. Hallelujah. Protect them from the evil generation. Protect them, O Lord. Protect our children, O God, from all kinds of I mean, worldly pleasures, O Lord. All the system of this world, O Lord. Hallelujah. Let us pray for that. Pray for every child, every child. Hallelujah. I would request, I mean, Brother Reggie to lead us in prayer now for all our Sunday school children and our youngsters now. Praise God.